Hey, peace and blessings, family. This is Brother Joab. For those who don't know me, first and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High through His Son, Christ, HaMashiach, the Anointed One, Yehoshua of Nazareth. And um, I want to say happy Sabbath to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Peace be upon you all. And to our brothers and sisters who don't keep the Sabbath today, peace be upon you as well. And um, like the title says, I wanted to um, go over, like the title says, being counted worthy in the resurrection because as the um as the scriptures say is going to be a resurrection for eternal life and a resurrection of everlasting content and shame and lord's will through the spirit of the most high today we can go over what do we need to do to be counted worthy in the resurrection so we can have the resurrection of everlasting life as the scriptures say so um what the scripture now what it says i'm going to start in um proverbs chapter 3 and it says because as, as we get into the scriptures Lord's willing is going to be uh, like, like excuse me sorry when you get into the scriptures we have to um, so do our own understanding and we have to put the most high words before our words and post, put the most high thoughts before our thoughts okay so Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding so we have to first we have to trust in the most high with all our heart meaning with our mind we have to make sure that um our thoughts are uh what's make sure our thoughts you understand are subdued in place of the most highest thoughts because when we start leaning on our own thoughts we start thinking wicked thoughts and we start bearing off of the scriptures so it says trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding because when you read what jeremiah chapter 17 it says well when you start trusting in your heart that's wicked who can who can know it because the heart is deceitful above all so we have to subdue our own thoughts and trust in these scriptures and trust what the most high is telling us to do and it says verse 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path so it says in all thy ways acknowledge him so whether it's the good or the bad we have to do what we have to praise the most high god always and now we have what his son to redeem us to that to do that we we have intercession through his son Hamashiach the Christ and it says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Verse 7, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So it says, Be not wise in thy own eyes, because what a lot of people, what they're doing today, is they're doing what? They're manip uh, manipulating scriptures. They're twisting scriptures to fit their doctrines. So the scripture is saying, Be not wise in thy own eyes. So don't take the scriptures and read it and put your own twist to the scriptures. Like it says in Peter's, no scriptures of private interpretation. So we have to do what? We have to trust what the Most High is telling us. We cannot put our own spin on the scripture. We have to go as, the, as it is written, thus saith the Lord. So it says, Proverbs 3 and 7, Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So that is the first step that we must do is fearing the Lord. And how do we do that? So let's go to um, the book of Ecclesiasticus in Sirach real quick. The book of Ecclesiasticus and Apocrypha. Chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 21. So it says, The fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. So it says, The fear of the Lord driveth away sins. So what, meaning what? Once you start to fear the Most High God, once you actually get into these scriptures and read what happens to sinners, what, what the Most High is going to do when he brings Christ back for this uh, destruction, you're going to start, start doing what? Obeying the word. You're going to humble yourself down and what? Get into these scriptures. Start keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. With what? With the faith of, ha with the faith of Hamashiach. So it says what? Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 1 verse 21. The fear of the Lord driveth away sin. So when you do what? When you start fearing the most high God, it's going to start doing what? Now you're going to start thinking in your head. You're going to be convicted with the thoughts in your head. Okay, I used to be a robber. I used to be a murderer. I used to be an adulterer. I used to be a thief. I used to be a covetous man, a covetous woman. Now what? Now once you start doing what? Once you start fearing the Most High, now what? Those thoughts are going to subdue. Because why? Now you're fearing the Lord. Now because why? Now you want that eternal life. So now you're going to start doing what? You're going to start showing repentance. And you're going to start what? Doing what? Bringing change. We have to understand that. So it says, The fear of the Lord driveth away sin. So once you truly repent, and once you acknowledge your faults and the faults of our forefathers and foremothers, now you're starting to fear the Lord. Because why? Now you're starting to come back to keeping these laws and commandments. Do what? Do Hamashiach. With that, with, uh, within him, you have no condemnation. So it says, The fear of the Lord jarred the way sins, 
And whereas present, it turned into a great wrath. Because why? Once you start producing the fear of the Lord, you're going to start having what? The fruits of the Spirit. And once you're having the fruits of the Spirit, you're not going to have wrath. Because why? You're going to be meek. You're going to be humble. And temperance. You're going to have patience. You're going to have self-control. And you're going to do what? You're going to start showing love towards our brothers and sisters. So that, that's why it's important. That's why this topic is going to build up, Lord's willing, through the Spirit of the Most High, how we as brothers and sisters can be counted worthy in the resurrection and not be the, the uh, vessels fit for destruction. We can be the vessels that has honor and gold. So I'm going to go to 2 Ezra chapter 14 and uh, verse 34. The book of 2 Ezra and Apocrypha, chapter 14, verse 34. It says, therefore, if so be that will subdue your own understanding. So now we just read this in Proverbs. It says, therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, meaning what? Renew, meaning what? Transform. When you reform something, you take it and you make it brand new. Reform your heart, meaning reform your mind. Meaning what? You, now you have to what? Reform your heart, the, your mind into these scriptures to get into what? These commandments. Now we have to learn, like the scriptures say, search the scriptures so we can have eternal life. So it says, uh, 2 Ezra chapter 14, verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. So what? If you what? Turn away from sin, turn away from wrath, and truly repent. And what? And start uh, believing in Hamashiach, the Christ, Yahweh Shai of Nazareth. And it says what? Ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. So once you put away the sinful thoughts, once you put off the corruptible man and put on the incorruptible man, you can what? You can what? It says, ye shall, after death ye shall obtain mercy. Meaning what? You can be raised up in the resurrection for eternal life. And it says, verse 35, for after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again. And then shall the name of the, the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So it says, after death, the judgment shall come. So you're going to go, when Christ comes back, and now it's, now it's time for judgment, he's going to do what? Now he's going to judge the whole world. Now what? Our, all our deeds, all our hidden things, is not going to be kept secret no more. It's going to be manifest before the whole world. And now let's go to, let's go to the Daniel real quick, and see why I expound more upon that in the book of Daniel. Because um, all the scriptures is tying up to uh, what do we sh what do we need to do to obtain um, to obtain the be counted worthy in the resurrection. Peace and blessings, brother. Peace and blessings. In Daniel's chapter twelve, verse two, it says, "And many of them that sleep in the depths of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt." So it says, uh, Daniel's twelve and two says. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth, so many that are asleep, our forefathers, our foremothers, the prophets of the old, our family members, everybody that's dead, they're going to get raised up again. It says, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So on the day when Hamashiach comes back, everybody's going to get raised up. And the scriptures say, the dead in Christ shall raise first. And it says, some to everlasting life. So some's going to get raised up based off of what they did, the judgments of what they did, their deeds and their life. It's going to be what? It's going to be to everlasting life. Because why? They kept the words of the Most High God. But it says, And some to shame and everlasting to contempt. So it says, Some to shame and everlasting contempt, meaning to everlasting scorn. They're going to be scorned. So it says, Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Why? Because they, they hid their sins. They never overcame their sins. They never overcame what was troubling them that was hindering them from getting to the kingdom. Whether they kept their sins to themselves or they never reached out for help. Or they just didn't believe in the Christ of Nazareth. Yehoshua from Nazareth. Hamashiach. They never uh, put their faith in him for him being the propitiation for our sins. They leaned upon their own understanding. And I'm going to uh, read that in a little bit too as well. Why is that dangerous for us to do? So Daniel's 12 and 2 again. It says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. So everybody that's sleeping... Because every once you die, that, when the scriptures say you die, you fall asleep. So it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So why? Because they hid their sins. They never overcame their sins. They never fasted their sins away. They, they stayed in the corruptible body. 
Because why? They didn't put their faith in the Most High through His Son. So now I'm going to go to the book of um, Sirach and the Apocrypha. Sirach chapter 5. <clears throat> Sirach chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, Set not thy heart upon thy goods, and say not, I have enough for my life. Verse 2, Follow not thy own mind, and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. So now this is all this is saying the same thing, precept upon precept. It says, Follow not thy own mind, and thy strength. So we just read that where? In 2 Ezra, we just read that where? In Proverbs 3, we have to what? So do our own thoughts. And we have to do what? Put our trust in the Most High God. That He's going to do what? Redeem us. He's going to what? Send His Son back the second time to do what? Redeem the foe that's what? Worthy enough to be crowned on the day of judgment. And it says, Follow not thy own mind and thy heart, excuse me, and thy strength, and walk in the ways, to walk in the ways of thy heart. Sorry. Verse 3, And say not, who will control me for my works? So who's going to question me? Who's going to say, what am I doing is good or bad? So it says, and say not. So the scripture say, don't say that. Say, who's going to judge me for doing this? Because why? We know that there's one lawgiver and one judge. And that is who? Yehoshua from Nazareth, the Christ. And it says, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride. Verse 4, say not, I have sinned. And what harm has thou happened unto me? So a lot of what a lot of us are doing is because we sin and nothing is happening to us. We think, oh, the Most High is just showing me mercy. But you're not. the thing is, you're not repenting. So what you're doing is you're adding sin upon sin upon sin. And the Most High, he's just waiting for you to repent. He's just having the angels jot it down. And what is going on is, when it's jotting it down, and you're just adding sin. You're adding sin. You committed adultery. You're coveting. You're stealing. You're murdering. You're hating your brother. All this is just piling up, piling up, and piling up. And, we'll, and we as Israelites, what we're doing is we're, we, uh, we're not humble enough to admit when we're wrong. We're not humble enough to say, okay, I'm messed up. Maybe I need help with this. Because why? Pride is getting in the way now. And what pride is what? The beginning of sin. When one what? When one departs from the Most High God. So Sirach chapter 5, verse 4. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm has happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. So the Lord, the Most High God, He's doing what? He's just, he's just taking notes, having the angels take notes. He's waiting. Is this person going to repent? Are they going to repent now? They did this today. They still have a chance to repent. Now they're doing this. They still have a chance to repent. And what harm has happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. So if you continue to live the life in sin, Romans 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of uh, God to eternal life is Christ Jesus. So it says what? B but he, excuse me, but will him and no wise let him go. Concerning propitiation, so concerning atonement for your sins, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. So just because you got away with doing this one time, don't think that you can keep doing it. Because why? The Most High is long-suffering and eventually he's going to do what? It's going to come back and bite you. Whether it be not today, not tomorrow, it could be 10 years from now, you can what? One day, boom, you can get hit by a car. You can get what? Shot in the drive-by. You can develop cancer. Now that's the most I was showing you. You should have repented, and now here we are. Now we're to this point. And now you're stuck like, uh-oh, what am I going to do now? Now you're going to get raised up in a day for everlasting judgment, for shame and contempt. So as, it's, as the lesson builds up, we can, we show the Lord's will through the spirit of the most high. We can show and help each other. How to be counted for the worthy, the worthiness of the resurrection, to be crowned with the eternal judgment. I mean, the eternal life. So, Sirach five and uh, Sirach five and five concerning propitiation. So, concerning the atonement for your sins, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Verse six and say not, His mercy is great; He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rested upon sinners. So it says, and say not, his mercy is grace. So don't, don't just keep saying, oh, we're under grace, we're under mercy, we're under grace, we're under mercy. Because eventually that mercy, that grace is going to run out. And now, now you're just stuck with, all, with a multitude of sins, with no, with no atonement. Because now, now there's no excuse now, because now why? Now we have Hamashiach that died for our sins. He was, that, he was that Passover lamb. He was that atonement for sins. So now, now, now what's the excuse, Israel? Now, now we're living in sin and now what? Now we're, making, we're still making excuses. Some of us don't even believe in Christ. 
And I'm going to get into those scriptures as well and why we need to uh, believe in the Hamashiach to reach this level of worthiness in the resurrection. Because if not, it's going to be a bad and sad day if you don't, if you don't put your trust in uh, the Most High and His Son. So verse 7, make no tarrying. So don't wait around. It says, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. So it says, do not wait around to repent. Do not wait around to show repentance because you don't know when we can go. You're not, you're not going to uh, know when the Most High is going to pull your cart. You can be driving down the street and bam, you got smacked by a bus. You can be driving and somebody runs a red light and now you ain't wearing your seatbelt or something and now, well, now you're gone. And it's like, oh man, I just committed adultery yesterday. I'm, I was going to repent on the Day of Atonement. So that's what some Israelites do. Some Israelites sin and then the Day of Atonement is 10 months, 9 months away and, and they wait specifically until the Day of Atonement to atone for their sins. The scriptures say you're not supposed to do that because you don't know when you're going to die. You can die in the multitude of your sins. And now when you're dead, now you're sleeping the earth. And now when you woke up on the resurrection day, and now you're looking crazy because you never, what, repented from your sins. And now Christ is like, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And now it's over. Now what are you going to do? So it says, Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. So we, we have to, what, repent daily. In the Psalms, it says that what? That David prayed seven times a day. And when you read in Daniel, Daniel prayed three times a day. David gave, uh, in the Psalms, David, King David did what? He gave praises seven times a day to the Most High God. Now, it's, now that's not saying that's a commandment to do, but uh, we, we should be praising the Most High always and all day. Singing praises and songs and hymns, like the scriptures say. Sirach 5 and 7, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. And put off, put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and, and thy security that shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Because why? Hamashiach Christ, Yahweh of Nazareth, he's going to do what? He's going to go boom, come in like a thief in the night, and the elements is going to melt with fervent heat. And then now, it's too late now. It's too late. That day has already come. It's too late. You didn't have your chance to repent. And then you're going to be, like I said, you're going to be in security. And then boom. Now now that's it. It's the judgment day. Whether you fell asleep before that time or you just sitting like because like the scriptures say, as the days of Noah, so it's gonna be like the second coming of our Lord. When everybody's just sitting and chilling, and then boom, Christ is here. And now everybody's like, oh man, whoops. But if you're getting yourself right now, you don't have nothing to fear. Like Paul said, you can stand boldly on the day of judgment. Because why? You're blameless, because why? You put off that old man. You put off that old woman. You repent it from your sins. So Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security that shall be destroyed. Because why? You never repented. You never fully repented. Why? You was holding grudges. You had hatred. You was a thief. You was usurping authority. You being a lion in your house. You don't show that you don't have that brotherly love. You don't show that compassion. You have lying lips. You you commit all these abominations before the Most High God, and you what? You thinking oh because I'm Christ is here that everything is all good now, but that's not the case. We still have to do what? We have to pray for our intercession because why? Now Christ is the mediator between man and the Most High God. Now that's what we have to understand. Now we have intercession through Christ, Hamashiach, and it says. And the night security that shall be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So now I'm going to go to uh, chapter 21. So uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 21, verse 1. My son, how thou sinned? So now it's asking the question. It says, now my son, how thou sinned? So have you committed sin? Have you committed a sin worthy of death? Have you committed a little sin? Do so no more. But ask pardon for thy former sins. Because why? We want to put off that old man. We want to make him die daily. So what? That old spirit can go. The flesh can die. So we can do what? We can grow up in the spirit. We can do what? Now we can strengthen ourselves. So now we can, like it says in Galatians, now we can strengthen our brothers and sisters. And like it says in Sirach 8, you have to, uh, you're you not supposed to reproach a man after they turn from their sins. We have to strengthen our brothers and sisters. So, okay, so you sinned. Don't judge them. Don't condemn them. Strengthen them. Yes, you can tear them down, but now you have to what? It's easily 
to tear our brothers and sisters down. It's so easy to do that. But who's going to put in the effort to build our brothers and sisters back up? Who's going to show them what they're doing is wrong and now we have to do it this way according to the scripture? That's where the real men and women are at. You're going to get dig into the scriptures and see your brother falling and you're going to what? Show that brotherly love, that brotherly love and, and affection for our brothers and sisters and do what? Build up their spirit to get them what to the point so they can be worthy in the resurrection. It's like you don't hate your own flesh. You shouldn't be hating your brothers and sisters because why? We are made after the similitude of the Most High God. So Sirach 21 and 1. My son, how's thou sinned? Do so no more, but ask pardon for thy former sins. Verse 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. So it says you're supposed to flee from sin as you will flee from a serpent. As you will flee from a snake. As you see a rattlesnake or any type of snake coiling on the ground. All over the place. If you get too close, eventually it's going to... And it strikes so fast, you're not even going to see it. That's how sin is going to creep up on you. It's going to bite you when you're not looking. And now, and then it's going to do what? Now you're stuck. But now, you, now we have a chance to repent from all type of sin. All manner of sins. Because what? Uh, before, all manner of sins could not be forgiven. Because why? Under certain sins, under the laws of Moses, you were, under two or three witnesses, you were doing what? You would get put to death. But now under Hamashiach, under Christ, now you can what? Now you can repent. And now you can live in Christ. Because now when you read Romans 8, it says, well, now we have no condemnation. We have no judgment in Christ. If you're truly walking in Christ in the spirit, Christ is your atonement for sins. Christ is your appropriation now. Christ is your mediator. Christ is your intercessor. Intercession, excuse me. And it says, flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying all the souls of men. All iniquity is a two-edged sword. The wounds thereof cannot be healed. So the, if, the more you keep sinning, the more you keep sinning, it's going to eventually drain you. It's going to destroy you. And eventually you're going to get uh, so, so locked in, you're not going to be able to get out. And that, now you become reprobate. Now, now it's uh-oh. Now, now there's a real problem. Once you become reprobate, now it's just the spirit is just departed from you. And now you just, you're stuck in limbo. And now on that day of resurrection, now it is over. So we have to what? We have to build up and encourage each other, our brothers and sisters daily, to do what? To help each other out. To encourage them. To strengthen them. To say, are you doing this okay? Like it says in what? Hebrews 3, exhort one another daily. Well, at least you fall into condemnation. So we have to do what? We have to learn how to speak to each other and encourage each other. Are you staying in the scriptures? What did you study today? Are you reading this? Oh, you sinned? Well, confess your faults. Okay, you did this. Now keep it moving. Pick yourself back up. Why? Because a just man falls seven times. But a wicked man will fall into mischief. So yes, we all sin daily. We all sin de sins that are worthy of death. But now we can do what? With a hope in Christ who is the living water, that living life, we can do what? That bread that came down from heaven, that manna bread, that bread of life. Now we can what? Now we can have eternal life. Because now what? We're putting our burdens and our cast upon him. So he can do what? Make intercession to the Father for us. For our sins. Let me get that in uh, John real quick. In 2 John real quick. Or for, sorry, 1 John. Real quick. Because that, that's what a lot of people don't understand. That now we, now we have an advocate. It's like you go to the, um, you, you commit a crime and you go to the courts, you hire a lawyer. And that lawyer does what? He's going to, with, whether it's a free lawyer or a pay lawyer, they're going to do what? Their job is to do what? Defend your case so you won't go to jail. So you won't get into trouble. So now now we have Hamashiach to do that. And First uh, John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. So now it's saying that, that you sin not. But of course what? We all fall short of the glory. So we're all going to do some type of sin. Whether it be intentional or unintentional. We all sin daily. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So now we have what? We have a mediator. We have a lawyer. We have somebody that's going to do what? That's going to speak for us. With the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know him, excuse me, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So now we have to do what? We have to put our uh, trust 
and how much yet that he's going to do what? That he's going to speak to the Father for us. That he's going to be an advocate like the scriptures say. Because why? The scriptures say that trust in the Lord with all your heart. So now we have to trust in the most High's words that he's saying. He's telling us now we have intercession. We have somebody that's going to do what? That's going to fight our battle for us. But we have to be what? Sincere about truly repenting. We can't just be, oh, please uh, pray, to, uh, pray to the most High through the Son. Oh, I just kill somebody, and then tomorrow I kill somebody, and then tomorrow I kill somebody. It doesn't go that way. It doesn't work like that. You have to flee from sin. You have to turn away. You have to truly repent. And that comes into doing what? Being baptized, being washed again, being born again, becoming a new creature in Christ. That's what it's all about. When you get counted to be worthy in the resurrection, it's not going to be a corruptible seed that's going to be raised up. It's going to be people that put off what? The mortal bodies. That put off what? The mortal thoughts. The fleshly thoughts. They came out of this wicked system of Babylon. And they did what? They came into the world. I mean they came out of the world. And they, now they came into Christ. Through the Most High. So now as we get into that. So now I'm going to go to um, Wisdom of Solomon real quick. Because um, a lot of people think that this thing is a, is a, is a game. And they're going to be. Um, it's going to be in for a rude awakening. If you don't put your. Uh trust in, uh, in Christ like the scriptures say so I'm going to go to Wisdom of Solomon I'm gonna, uh, chapter 4 and I'm going to start at verse um, 15 this the people saw and understood it not neither laid their hands neither, excuse me, neither laid they up in their minds that his grace and mercy is with his saints and that he have respect unto his chosen verse 16 thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living so it says thus the righteous that is dead shall condemn the ungodly which are living. Meaning what? Those the righteous that are died, those who uh, who died in Christ and Hamashiach is going to be raised first, and they're they're going to be what? The saints and the judges of the world, the old prophets of old, the ones who were martyred for Christ. All those men, the apostles, all those men, they're going to be the judges along with what? The hundred and forty-four thousand. So the ones who are already dead in Christ, they're going to be raised up. So it says what? shall condemn the ungodly which are living and youth that has soon perfected the many years and old age of the unrighteous for they shall see the end of the wise and shall not understood excuse me and shall not understand what God and his counsel have decreed of him and to say and to excuse me and to what end the Lord shall set him in safety they shall see him and despise him so now we're going to see who it's talking about now it says because this is this one is for Old Testament Israelites too. They need to really hear this stuff because this stuff, if you don't, if you're not believing in Christ, this thing is going to be a bad day for you. And the scriptures is going. I'm going to read the scripture, and you'd have to determine for yourself. It's going to be a bad day if you don't believe in Hamash yet. And it says, "For they shall see the end of the wise, and shall not understand what God and His counsel have decreed of him, and to what end of the Lord shall set him in safety." They shall see him and despise him, but God shall laugh them to scorn, and they shall hereafter be a vile carcass and a reproach among the dead forevermore. For he shall rend them and cast them headlong, and they shall be speechless. And he shall shake them from the foundation, and they shall be utterly, wait, excuse me, utterly laid waste and be in sorrow. And then their memorial shall perish. And when they cast up their accounts of their sins, they shall come with fear, and their own iniquity shall convince them of their to their face so now we're going to get into who this is speaking about and it says and when they cast up their accounts of their sins they shall come with fear and their own iniquity shall convince them to the face because meaning what they never repented they never what believed in the son of man they never believed that what uh the most high sent his uh, only begotten son to die for what our sins they keep saying, oh, this Greek idol, this man is an idol. So they're going to, if they don't repent, those are going to be the ones that are going to be raised up for shame and everlasting uh, contempt. Contempt, excuse me. And those are the vessels that's made for dishonor if they don't repent. But they, now they still have time to repent. Because why? Christ hasn't come back yet. So now it says, what? Chapter 5. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5. Now we're going to see who Solomon is speaking about. So chapter 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in, so then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labor. So it says, this man is going to be standing boldly before the face of such as has afflicted him. Excuse me. So this man is going to be standing boldly for all those who persecuted and afflicted him and made no account of his labors. So they, they, they just brushed him off like, oh, this man, he's nobody. 
And we're going to see who's who this man is that they so-called say is nobody. Verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all they look for. So they say when they see this man, they're going to be astounded. They're going to be troubled. And they're going to be amazed with the strangeness of his salvation. Who is this man and how did he get here and why is he here? And it says, verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This is he whom we have sometimes in derision. This is he whom sometimes we have mocked. They ridiculed this man. They what? Oh, this is... This is a Greek idol. This is a Roman God. This is a pagan God. They're going to be saying all this stuff. They're going to be repenting in their heart. But at that time, it's going to be too late. So now is the time to repent. But on the judgment day, when you're standing before Christ, he's saying this man is going to be thinking this thing. But it's, at that time, it's going to be too late. And it says, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, <clears throat> This is he. Whom we have sometimes in derision, so sometimes in uh, sometimes in mocking, they mock this man, they scorn this man, and a proverb of reproach. And it said, first four, we fools accounted his life madness. So it said, we fools have counted his life madness because why? They didn't believe that he was what the son of the Most High. And it says, and his end to be without honor because why? He was crucified. And they said, what? If he be the son of God, what? Take yourself down from the cross and save yourself. This man calls after Eli, Elias. But now they do, now it says what? We fools, now they're calling themselves fools, accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. Because why? They, they kept saying, this man has a devil. This man is this. This man is that. And now his death was what? Without honor. Because why? He was crucified when they was what? They were the one who crucified him. And it said... How is he numbered among the children of God? So I said, how is this man here right now? The, the mind is just blown. This man died on the cross. This man was, a, um, he, he um, compared himself to the Most High God. He, they say he blasphemed, he blasphemed the Most High. But now he said, how is this man here? And he said, how is he numbered among the children of God? And his lot is among the saints. Therefore, we have erred from the way of truth. So I said, that now they admit it. Oh, man, we're wrong. This man is the son of the Most High God. Now we, now we what? Now we need to repent, but now it's what? It's too late now. Because now you're standing before Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And what? Oops. For he is numbered among the children of God, and his lot among the saints. Therefore we have erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. So it says, for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Meaning what? They never what? Accepted Christ. They never accepted Hamashiach, Yehoshua of Nazareth. They never accepted him as what? The Son of God. They never accepted him as what? Dying for our sins. Because they pull out old, um, old Testament scriptures. No man can die for your sins. All this and all that. Their only savior is the Most High God. Taking those scriptures out of context. That's what they do. And they 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 jump to Ezekiel. They jump to um, Isaiah. They they jump to Jeremiah. But not knowing, understanding that what Christ comes in the volume of the book. So when when they take these scriptures out of context, they're what. They're actually dis dishonoring the Most High and calling the Most High a liar. And when you read the Numbers, it says what the Most High is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man. So we have to do what? Now we have to what? We have to put our trust in the Most High and his son. Because now we have what? We have a chance to be redeemed. We have a chance to make it out of this captivity. Well, if he falls asleep or if Christ comes back while we're still here in Babylon. Now we can do what? Put our faith. Now we have confidence that what? The Most High stretched out his arm, which is uh, Christ, Hamashiach. To do what? To redeem us out of this captivity. And while the, the, while the wicked is what? burned up in the flames when the elements go boom so it says uh, wisdom of Solomon 5 and 8 what have pride profited us so it says these people who don't accept Christ as a savior is prideful and pride is what the beginning of sin when what when one departs from the most high God and what have pride profited us or what good have riches 
with our advancing brought us. All these things are passed away like a shadow, and as a post that hasted by, and as a ship that passes over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway or the keel of the waves. So we have to what? We have to put our trust in what? Now in Christ. Because why? He redeemed us for our sins. And what? Being counted worthy in the resurrection is, mean, is doing what? Us repenting from our sins. We have to do what? Now we have to put off the old man. I know it's hard. But we have, we have to do it. We have to fight daily. Because why? The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. So we have to what? Fight that flesh. Put it off. Put it off and let that spirit grow. We have to nourish each other in these scriptures. We have to get in these scriptures and let our spirits grow. So we can what? Draw nigh to God and he's going to do what? Draw nigh unto you. So now I'm going to go to uh, the book of John. Because that, that's the, more whole important, the whole important lesson is building up to the what? To the teachings of Hamashiach. To, so we can draw close, close to Hamashiach and he can do what? Redeem us. But we have to do what? Be in Christ first. If we're not in Christ, we're doing this for not. So I'm going to go to John chapter um, 11. Now this is when uh, Lazarus had died. And now uh, Christ, he's going to, uh, Hamashiach, he's going to do what? He's going to raise Lazarus from the dead. But I want to read when he was talking to Lazarus' sister. In John 11, I'm going to start at verse um, 23. And Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Verse 24. Martha, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So now what? Christ HaMashiach, what is he saying? She's, uh, Martha, Lazarus' sister, she's saying that what? Her brother Lazarus is going to rise again on the resurrection, on the last day. Because why? He was a righteous man. He was a righteous brother. And now this is what HaMashiach said to her. He said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. So now what? Is it talking about physically dead? Or is it talking about spiritually dead? Because why? Ezekiel 37, the valley of the dry bones. Is it talking about uh, people that's uh, physically dead? Or are they walking around like zombies? Walking around like ghosts? Yet what? It's, it's, it's uh, spiritually dead. But now they, they uh, the most high they what? Breathe that breath of life into them. And now what? Now that breath of life is who? It's Hamashiach, our Savior. So now what? Now we accept Christ as our Savior. So John 11 and 25. And Jesus, or Yehoshua, said, said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? So now he said, believe you this, that I am the breath? I am the breath of life. I am the resurrection. She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. So now she acknowledged that what? Jesus or Yehoshua of Nazareth was the Christ, was the Hamashiach, was the anointed one, sent by the Most High God to do what? Redeem Israel from their sins. So now I'm going to uh, Thessalonians real quick. First Thessalonians. Because that's what we have to understand. All, this, is, this is not about a you-me thing. This is about a us thing. Getting together and doing what? Helping each other out. Building each other up. Making sure we're not sinning. So we can be what? Part of the 144,000. Well, crowned with that glorious crown. And we can stand stiffly in the name of the Lord. So now, um, 1, Thessalon 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse... Um, 13, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye, sor that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus, or Yehoshua, died and rose again, even so them which is sleep and Jesus, or Yehoshua, will God bring with them. So it says those who do what? Those who are asleep. It says don't sorry for them. If you know that they were in the Lord don't if they if you you have a family member that passes away and you know for certain that they were in the Lord, he says don't sorry for them because don't mourn for them because why, they're going to be raised up just like Christ is like how Mashiach was raised up, they're going to be raised up in the resurrection and they're going to be raised up counted for worthiness to have eternal life, the immortality they put because why 
They put off that corruptible body. They put off that corruptible seed. And they did what? They put on the full armor of the Most High. And they did what? They repented. They truly repented. And they, they served the Lamb wherever He went. And they believed every word that He said. And then they're not doing what? They're not leaning on their own understanding. They're not mixing doctrines. They're not coming in with false doctrine. They're coming in with sound truth. They're coming in with true repentance. So it says, verse 15, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself, from, excuse me, <clears throat> for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So it says, I'm going to read that again because I messed that up, I'm sorry. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. So this is who? This is Christ. This is Hamashiach. He's going to descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, of the Most High God. And the trump, and the, excuse me, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So those who lived in Christ, those who truly repented but fell asleep before Christ came, they're going to be right, raised up first. And those are going to be the ones that's going to be crowned with eternal glory. Those are going to be the ones who, who Christ is going to put over to rule these other nations. Along with 144,000. So now let's go to um, John chapter 6. Because all this is building up. It's showing what? Repentance and what we need to do. It first starts with what? Changing our thought process. And then what? Once we repent. We have, once we acknowledge our faults, our faults. We have to do what? We have to get baptized for the remission of our sins. And what? Be born again. And now once it starts from that, now you can what? Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And now that's bringing you what? Closer to Christ. Closer to the Most High God. Like it says in James 4. Draw nigh unto God. He's going to draw nigh unto you. If you seek the Lord diligently, He's going to answer you eventually. Just like, just like Christ, how Mashiach said, if you abide in the Father, He's going to abide in you. It's interchangeable. But we have to play our part. We can't just say, oh, I repent. Where's, where's Christ? Where's Hamashiach? We have, to put our, we have to put the work in. Bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Bring forth works worthy of repentance. So you can do what? So we can be raised up with what? To live with the uh, immortality. So we can live forever. I know, I don't know about you brothers and sisters, but I want to live forever. But, we, but doing that, it comes with what? It comes with work. Because we are what? Gold tried through the fire. We're going to come through temptations. We're going to come to low points where we want to fall out and don't want to do this anymore. But those are the times that we're supposed to have what? Our brothers and sisters to do what? Strengthen us in the Lord. To say we have to endure to the end because why? At the end of that, at the end of that tunnel was what? A prize which no man can give you but what? Christ Jesus. And he's going to give you what? That gift of immortality. And, and if you want that, you have to what? You have to fight for it. Because it's not going to just, it's not given to you. You have to earn it. So John chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse, um, let me start at verse 39, uh, let me start at verse 38, sorry, John 6 and 38, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So now Christ here, how much he what he's saying here, he didn't come down to do his will, but he came down to do who? The will of the most high God. And this is the Father's will, which have sent me. Now he's going to explain to you what the will of the Most High is. That all of which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So who was given to Christ? My, my sheep know my voice. Those who are in Christ, they know. Christ knows them. He knows who they are, who was, the Father gave to them, to him. Those who are in Christ, they know. He knows. And it says, <clears throat> And for this the Father's will, and which have sent me, that all which I have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. And he says, so it says, everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So we have to do what? We have to put our trust in the Most High. That he what? He's, he actually sent Christ the first time and Christ what? 
was he died and was crucified and he did what rose on the third day so we have to do what first and foremost we have to believe in the resurrection we have to believe that christ or how mashiach was raised that this what this christ was who this anointed man was who yehoshua of nazareth the son of joseph the son of mary who was born in bethlehem and was what was raised in nazareth so now i'm gonna read it again so john 6 and 40 and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone that seeth the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day so now what we have to believe that Christ came to die for our sins I'm gonna keep reiterating this over and over because this is very important we have to believe and we have to confess out of our mouths that uh, that Yehoshua of Nazareth is the anointed one is Hamashiach the Christ the anointed one the Savior of Israel we have to we have to confess that and we have to what truly repent and repentance comes with what being converted being born again being baptized getting immersed in that water and letting the old man die according to Romans 6 and come up a new creature this is how Christ was um was killed on the cross and they raised him up so as you go into that water and come up a new creature all this is important all this is what to be dead and buried in Christ and be risen again so now you are risen on that day on the day of your rebirth and now when you die again now you what now you're raised up again to what an incorruptible and mortal now you have what you have now you have the spirit now you have what an, an incorruptible body now you're living in the spirit and now now you have the gift of immortality now you can now you can walk into the kingdom on that day of judgment when Christ says you are worthy to enter into these gates but we have, first we have to do what to do our own understanding we have to do what accept that that we're under the new covenant now in Christ and we can't be mixing the Levitical priesthood with the priesthood of um, Christ after the order of Melchizedek we have to understand these things now I'll go to um, 1 Corinthians because that's a lot of a lot of Israelites they're, they're condemning our brothers and sisters and they're trying to bring the burden of keeping the laws under the sacrifice which uh, the uh, the apostle said that it was a burden for our forefathers not to say that we're not supposed to keep the laws because we are supposed to keep the laws but they're putting the burden on us that we're keeping the laws in uh, ways that we're not that even our forefathers couldn't do it so now we have like the scriptures say we are keeping the laws and we have no what condemnation in Christ because now what once we keep the laws in Christ we don't need to do all the extra stuff that came with the sacrifices and everything that came with the law. Because why? Christ did away with that. Hebrews 7, 8, 9, and 10. Back to back. That kills that right there. So 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What's I preach unto you? What is the gospel being preached? It's what? The laying of the hands. The resurrection. Baptisms. The, that's, that's the gospel that's being preached. That is the gospel according to Hebrews 6 that we should be preaching. It should be what? Resurrection. It should be what? Repentance. It should be what? Laying of the hands to what? Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it says, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So this is a, this is the sound doctrine that Paul was preaching. According to Hebrews 6, according to Galatians 1. As the gospel is what? As repentance in Christ. So it says, Which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which you are also saved. So it says, If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, or how Mashiach, died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And, he, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas. Cephas, excuse me. He was seen of Cephas, which is Simon Peter. He was seen of Cephas. Then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of about, excuse me, of above 500 brethren at once. Of whom the greater part remained in this prison. But some are fallen asleep. So now Paul is saying some of these men who saw Christ, who saw Hamashiach after he was risen on the third day, some of these men have passed away. They fell asleep. And he said, After that he was seen of James, then all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. So now Paul said, Now he was the last, he was the last one of the apostles to see Christ. Because why? Christ, uh, Hamashiach, came to Paul on, his road, on the way to Damascus. He appeared unto Paul, whose name was Saul at that time. 
<clears throat> verse 9 for I am the least of the apostles that I am not meet to be called an apostle so now Paul says I am the what he humbled himself he said I am the least of the apostles and he said I am not meet to be called an apostle he said I am not worthy to be called an apostle why did Paul say that what was what was Paul doing before he was an apostle before he got called to be an apostle Paul was doing what he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, meaning he kept the law verbatim down to the T. He dotted all his T's and crossed all his, excuse me, he dotted all his I's and crossed all his T's. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, brought up what? Under the feet of who? Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. So Paul, he did what? He persecuted the church for believing in Christ. How much yet? So he said, I'm not worthy to be called apostle because why? He did, he persecuted the church, killing these Christians. Getting them what? Sent away, locked up. Getting them permission from the, uh, for them to lock them up and throw them, throw them in jail. But now what? All praises for what? Repentance, for grace, for truth, for mercy. Because why? The Most High is long-suffering. And now what? Ha Mashiach what? is what? The propitiation. He is the atonement for our sins. So now he called Saul to do what? To a greater calling. And now what? Now this is what Paul is saying. 1 Corinthians 15 and... um. Or was I at nine? For I am the least of the apostles. I mean, he is the lowest of the lowest of the apostles. That I am not meet to be called an apostle because why? He said, I'm not worthy. And he says, because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10 now says, but by the grace. So now we have grace. We have truth. We have mercy. We have room for repentance. Because why? Paul was the worst. He was rounding up Christians left and right. Making sure they were slaughtered. Making sure they were arrested. Making sure they were persecuted to the wickedest point. He was given permission to them to persecute the church. Anybody that called on the name of Yehoshua. Anybody that declared him to be the son of God. This is what Paul was doing. But now Paul was, he became one of the what? One of the best teachers. Or he became what? He, he, took, he buffeted. He took stripes. He, he got beat for Christ's sake. Among our people and among the Gentiles. Both Israelite Gentiles and other nation Gentiles. He suffered for Christ's namesake. And he did what? He glorified in it. Because why? He knew his promise that he was going to be what? Raised up on the last day. So all the, all what Paul went through was what? what? It wasn't for nothing. It was for him to be what? To show him repentance. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. So Paul acknowledged that he got mercy. He had, Paul acknowledged that he did what? He had a chance to repent. And he took that. He took full hold of it. And he repented. And now Paul became one of the, the top apostles. He was out there preaching the word boldly. Him, Barnabas, Peter, all them, James, they were out there going at it. Getting in his word, zealous for the word. He, just like he was zealous for the law, now he became what? Zealous for the teachings of Christ, as we should be. As our brothers and sisters. We should be what? Striving to get in the scripture to learn about Hamash yet. So we can what? Be raised up on that last day. This stuff should be putting fire in your bones. So you can what? Be excited about this because so we can what? On the day that our Lord comes back, we can meet him and stand boldly and say, I kept your commandments. I kept your word. And he's going to say, come into this gate. And now we can have immortality. This is what should be, we should be striving for. We shouldn't be striving and doing divisions of the law. We should be what? Studying these scriptures for repentance. While learning. <clears throat> but I labor more abundantly than they all. So he said, Paul, he, even though he was the least apostle and he found grace, he labored more than all the other apostles. Because why? His job was to do what? Teach repentance unto the Gentile Israelites. <clears throat> More abundantly than they. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so they and so ye believe. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how, how say among ye that there is no resurrection of the dead? So there was what? There was a sect of um Sadducees at that time who didn't believe in the resurrection. And it says now, if Christ be preached, so you saw this man after he was crucified. You saw him walking around Jerusalem. You saw him walking around Israel. Excuse me. So he's, now he's saying, if, he be, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how some say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. So he's saying, basically, some of you saw Christ. Some of you saw Hamashiach after he died and he rose again on the third day. You saw it with your own eyes. So why are you saying there is no resurrection? When there's clearly a resurrection, this man was what? Was raised on the third day. 
verse 13 but if there be no res resurrection of the dead then is Christ not risen and if Christ be not risen then is our preaching vain and your faith is also in vain yea and we are found false witnesses of God so now they say if Christ was not risen from the dead we are doing this in vain our faith is in vain we're believing in the most high in vain because why we're all just going to die in our sins who's going to be counted worthy who's going to be making it to the kingdom except for the prophets everybody else is, is, is dead we just living our life just to die that's pretty much what he's saying if we don't have Christ if we don't have Hamashiach if we don't believe in him if we just living our life to to die pretty much we, we up we raised up to be grown men and women and then we go to sleep and then oops now, now we're dead that's it we lived our life for nothing that's what he's saying but but what well we know for a fact because why we have the faith that the most High put the spirit upon us brothers and sisters to understand that what Christ was risen on the third day that there is a resurrection and I'm hoping the resurrection is in what Christ Yehoshua of Nazareth Hamashiach <clears throat> and yea we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up if so be that the dead raised not up so he said there is no resurrection we're calling we're lying on the most high that's what Paul that's what Paul is saying <clears throat> for if the dead raise not excuse me for if the dead raise not rise not sorry then is not Christ raised and if Christ be not raised your faith is in vain ye are yet in your sins uh oh so now it's saying if Christ was not risen if he did not die and his blood was not shed now we don't have atonement for sins now you are still in your sins and now you're going to do what now you have to what depend on the blood of bullocks depend on the blood of, the blood of goats to do what to do yearly sacrifices for atonements of sins now you have to do these annual sacrifices that our forefathers couldn't bear the burden was too much now we're going to be now I was still in the law of Moses so now if you commit adultery if you commit murder now now you're what now you're stoned under the law under Moses with two or three witnesses if you have a rebellious kid if you have a rebellious child and they uh the, now the elders can take them out and stone them in the city all this is without Christ but now we have Christ so now all this is what now we have a chance to repent from all this stuff because now we have what Christ who was raised up the first fruits of the dead who ascended into heaven so now believing on him we can be we can partake in that and the fruits and be what and the resurrection with him in the kingdom with eternal glory with new bodies where there's no tears and no crying where there's joy always and a beautiful heaven and with a new heaven and new earth that's what we want that's what we need that's what we what well we have to what work for it. we have to what fight for it. we have to put off the old man we have to put off the sin daily we have to recognize when we're in error and repent and humble ourselves down and stop being prideful and stop holding grudges stop hating our brothers stop being jealous stop giving the evil eye stop lying stop holding malice stop being conniving stop twisting scriptures stop uh stop manipulating people we have to do what we have to love our brothers like we love ourselves we have to do what encourage each other to build each other up in Christ to strengthen our brothers and sisters all this is about repentance and coming into the knowledge that what Christ HaMashiach died for us to do what to make an atonement for the sins of Israel <clears throat> verse 18 then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished so the ones the prophets the ones who fall asleep in Christ they perish they're not getting raised up that's what he's saying if Christ did not get raised up then all these people are, are just dead and that's it but even David knew he said thou shalt not leave my soul in hell because why he knew he knew on the day that Christ going to be in the resurrection that he was going to get raised up now it says what first Corinthians 15 and 19 if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are all men must most miserable <clears throat> so I'm gonna read that again first Corinthians 15 and 19 if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are all of men most miserable but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept <clears throat> for since by men came death by man come also the resurrection of the dead so it says for since by man came death by what because what from Adam and Eve and from Adam all men died because of Eve and then what do the do this man now do what how now we live 
do what? Yehoshua of Nazareth the Christ. How much yet we can now we can live. And it says what? For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Because what? Christ is what? The second Adam. He is that perfect man. Christ was um, Adam was what? The embodiment of man that what? To become sin. And now what? Christ was the second Adam to show that we can come out of sin. That we can purge ourselves from the sin. That we can do what? We can live righteously if we do what? Be obedient to the Most High. But we have to what? Subdue our own understanding. We have to what? Submit to the will of the Most High and not question His what? What He tells us to do. And we have to follow the Most High. Because what? Faith without works is dead. Show me uh, your works and I'll show you my works by what? By my faith. So we have to what? We have to hold on strong to that faith and grip it tight and don't let it go. <clears throat> but every man in his order, Christ is the first fruits. Afterward, they that are in Christ at his coming. <clears throat> so what? After his order, so it's Christ first, Hamashiach first. He was raised up first, the first fruits. And then after him is what? Everybody else, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So now let's go to... um. 1 Corinthians 6 real quick. You see, this is what I want. First Corinthians uh, 6 and 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. So it says, 1 Corinthians 6 and 14. And God hath raised up the Lord. So the Most High did what? He raised up Christ, Hamashiach. And will also raise up us by his own power. So just like he raised up Christ during the resurrection, he's going to raise us up. But what? We have to make sure that we are worthy to be raised up in the resurrection for what? For eternal life. Because some of us are going to get raised up for eternal shame. Excuse me, eternal shame and condemnation and contempt. And we're going to be cast out with the weeping and the gnashing of the teeth. So we have to make sure we're doing what we need to do to do what? To um to make it to have eternal life, to show to show the Most High through His Son Christ that we are worthy to walk through those gates that we put off the flesh, because the Scriptures say no flesh is going to enter into the kingdom. We have to what change this first. We have to make sure this is right. If this is not right, all this is going to be sick. If the head is if the head is sick, the whole body is sick. So now I'm going to um I'll, I'll go to um. First Ezra, where is it at? Let's see if I can find it real quick. It might be in Second Ezra. Give me a second. Find it real quick. It might be in Second Ezra. Uh, Second Ezra, chapter two. I'm gonna go to this and I'll end it on this. Second Ezra, chapter two, and I'm gonna start at verse forty-two. I, Ezra, saw upon the mountain Sion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. And in the midst of them there was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> he answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing, and put on the immortal, and have confessed the name of God. Now are they crowned and received palms. Then I said unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them, and given them palms in their hands? He answered, so he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way, and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God that have seen. Now this second Ezra, this Ezra, this Ezra is the same Ezra that you read in the Bible for the book of Ezra. That's what this Ezra is. So it says, they put off the mortal clothing. Meaning what? They put off the things of the flesh. They put off adulteries. They put off fornications. They put off murdering thoughts. They put off hatred. They put off malice. They put off lasciviousness. They put off all the works of the flesh. And they put on the spirit to do what? To follow the lamb wherever he goes. They were not defiled by women. They, they were men stiffly for the Lord who ruled the house well. Who did what? Who repented from their sins. 
So that's what we have to do. When it, when we uh, have the hope and to be counted worthy in the resurrection, we have to make sure that we're right. We have to make sure our brothers and sisters are right. But only a remnant is going to truly return and uh, make it into the kingdom. So we have to be make sure we're part of that remnant because why? Many are called, but few are chosen. So we want to make sure we do our best to be part of that chosen few. So brothers and sisters, if you see your brothers and sisters slipping and falling, don't be scared to shoot them in scripture. Encourage them, like it says in Hebrews 3. Exhort one another daily. So we can what? If you want this like you don't want to see yourself die, why would you want to see your brothers and sisters die? We have to keep each other in check from not sinning. And if we're going in error, we have to do what? Through the will and the power of the Most High through his son Hamashiach, we have to do what? Strengthen our brothers and sisters. And with that, brothers and sisters, I pray that this class was edifying through the spirit of the Most High. And I said, peace be upon you all.